8. My lungs heaved for air as we crossed the bridge. Dasini slowed her pace to match my own and pivoted to jog backward. Balance your pace with your breathing, master. Your stamina is low. I huffed words in segments. The blinking red bar gave me that impression. Shorten your strides, slow your speed, and let your bar recover. Since my chest burned more when I tried to speak, I just nodded and did as the Michonne instructed. Within a few strides, my stamina bar stopped blinking and began to fill with yellow again. The Michonne lived for running. She'd explained the day after we met that it was part of her daily routine, which accounted for her high stamina rating. Although the constitution attribute that raised stamina capped according to level, stamina knew no bounds. You have gained plus one stamina. Mission accomplished, I said. Good. Let's walk now. She held a hand out to my chest to slow my jog while shortening her backward strides until she was walking. Then she twisted and fell in beside me. She had a certain bounce to her step as we moved toward the second footbridge that formed to cross the river when I dropped the foundation stone. You seem troubled, master. A few forced breaths allowed me to utter my words more comfortably. Impatient is all. As I said, if we run each morning until you gain one stamina, you'll eventually be able to go miles at a time without discomfort. If we were really going to run each day until I gained a point, and if each point came with more effort than the last, two things were true. One, I was screwed. Two, I'd come out the other side of being screwed with some serious resilience. It's not about that. I'm actually grateful I can increase my stats without leveling. That sounds strange coming from you. She flexed her bicep. I thought it was all about the levels, dude. He should never, ever say dude. I was jesting, master. Tell me what's really knocking around in your head. I'm just ready to get those instances cleared. She elbowed me and tilted her head toward the plateau. It seems you aren't alone. Two figures stood by the master's cabin, the dark-haired one a head taller than the blonde. It seems our companions have risen and stand ready to assist. She clutched my hand and squeezed as we crossed the second bridge. You can cool off in a cave before we start. Sounds good. Dasini stood ready with her shield strapped tight on her back and her mace dangling loosely on one hip while the moat centered on the instant's doorway swirled behind. I focused on her in particular because, if things went according to plan, this could be a very special day. If she could fill one quarter of her XP bar, she'd hit level 20 and be able to choose her advanced combat profession. I was only a level and a half behind her thanks to the quest to rescue Rashan and the completion of the quest where I'd discovered the true nature of Priya's relationship with her mother the matron of the wood. The latter had come with a level bump on top of the XP gained. We were low on mana potions. I did a quick survey of the Foundation's guides, TOC, and found a solution. Alchemist Laboratory, Level 1, Foundation Building. A place for research, discovery, and creation of all manners of potions and salves. The Alchemist's Laboratory is a must-have for any adventurer who desires an edge in battle. Requirements. 50 building points, 80 mined gold or 40 gold coins, 2 farms, a mana well, 100 wood planks, 15 stone, build time, 2 days for a single laborer, each added laborer cuts build time, weighted by their construction skills, max laborers, 3. I made a note in my interface to discuss the alchemist's lab with Pulo and see where the dwarf thought it fell on the list of priorities. I recalled his mention of building points, which he referred to as BP. I found the chapter with a single thought. Building points. Each foundation receives a daily allotment of 100 building points, BP, distributed at 12 a.m. Enora time. The allotment of BP can be increased in three ways. One. Foundation level increase. Level 2. Hamlet. 200 BP. Level 3. Boro. 350 BP. 
Level 4, District, 500 BP. Level 5, Town, 750 BP. Level 6, City, 1000 BP. 2. Laborer Count. 20 BP are awarded daily per summoned laborer. If a laborer falls in battle, the BP are removed from the Midnight Award. 3. 5 BP per bound companion present in the instance at the time of the daily reward. Requires two farms before benefit is realized. As I lay awake the previous evening, I'd noticed how the lack of a gold mine could be compensated for with real money, but I hoped we'd find a mine when our borders expanded because the trading post's requirements were heavy. Trading post. Create trade connections with village towns, cities, and other players' foundations to trade crafted goods, gathered materials, and coin. Level 3 borough building. Requirements. 400 building points. 400 mined gold or 200 gold coins. 100 wood planks. 20 stone. 10 animal skins, build time, 3 days for a single laborer. Each added laborer cuts build time, weighted by their construction skills. Max laborers, 3. Until I found an alternative source of money, the urgency to level up the foundation and push the borders out would increase. After all, we had powerful people on our asses. After a quick chat with Pulo that morning, I knew that Giles would be out with Moggy chopping wood. After a farmer, the foreman's next laborer spawn would work on the foundation for a quarry so we could break stone. The dwarf wanted to build an anvil he'd eventually plant in the smithy. It required 100 stone and 50 copper ores, so we agreed the next priority would be a mine. This is why we picked the cave with the red swirl first. I stepped forward and touched the pedestal. Foundation Challenge Mining Objective Clear this tunnel to unlock a mine rife with copper, tin, and randomly spawned metal nodes of variant composition. Random gem nodes will also spawn here. Rewards. 11,000 XP. Timed resource spawning. Level cap. 25. Max party size. 4. Levels are not automatically adjusted in this instance. Rashan smoothed her new robe while Priya clenched her fists impatiently at the entrance. I tightened my belt and gave the lacings on my pants a good tug. The pitter-patter of footsteps from behind drew our gazes as Lucius appeared in the entrance to the cave. Gemini! She rushed over to me. Hey, Lucius, what's up? The half-goblin set her hands on my abs and smiled a mouthful of pearly whites. I guessed the trait came from her human parentage, but who knew what full-blooded goblins looked like in this world? I spoke with Charney, and he wants to be bound. My head cocked back. Really? What did you say to convince him? Did you promise gold? She shook her head and slapped my belly. What? Do humans say goblins are greedy gold lovers or something? You sound like Charney. No, I haven't heard anything like that. I was just kidding. Oh. She blushed yellow. So did you have to promise him anything? No, silly. I just kept him up half the night and wore him down. I think he grew so tired of my nagging he relented. Not the best of circumstances to make this kind of commitment. She cocked a hip to one side and set a hand on it. You want the best circumstances or a new companion? Honestly, I'm not sure. Do you think he'll loosen up? Another figure appeared in the tunnel and strolled toward us. Charney was an inch shorter than his sister, but now that he'd left his long sleeves with his bedroll, I saw his shoulders were actually kind of buff. I'm plenty loose, he said. But it's like my sister says, I don't always adapt to change so well. I'm kind of a loner. But Roshan agreed to take me under her wing, and since Priya happens to be the daughter of the woman who comes to me in my dreams, I figure there's a higher power at work here. So if you'll have me... I'll try to be less of a pain in your ass. That's the best I can do. Party chat. Gemini. You sure you want to take this guy on, Rosh? Roshan, you will never call me this. Gemini, it's just shorthand. Stop being a pain. Yes or no to the goblin. Roshan, I cannot see his affinity, but I sense it is stronger than was my own when I began training. 
He is level fifteen without the benefit of a class, which means he is no stranger to work. Although he fishes like an idiot, I believe there is potential for him in the light. Gemini. That's the longest yes I've ever seen. Roshan. And you think the goblin is difficult? Charney threw his hands up. Don't think about it too hard or anything, human. I can always just... He thrust a thumb over one shoulder. Dude, be patient. I gave him my best glare. He pressed his goblin lips into a thin white line, but it was my patience being tested. A mind challenge waited, and I was ready to get on with it. Maybe it was me who needed to chill out. I'm going to spend six of your attribute points in intelligence. When I spend the sixth point, you'll be permanently bound to me. You can roam freely like all of my companions, and if you become an insufferable pain in my ass, you will roam freely at a great distance. He waved a dismissive hand. And I live forever, right? Yes, Charney. Yeah, yeah, I'm in, Bosch man. Let's do this. All right. You might feel a little woozy. I bound the goblin and dismissed the system messages. Charney teetered on his heels and toes with each point spent, but righted himself quickly enough when I finished. Wow, that's intense. I winked at Rashan. So I've heard. Charney, half goblin, level 15, no class selected. Strength, 4, dexterity, 4, intelligence, 12, wisdom, 2, constitution, 6, charisma, 3, combat skills, ranged, 14, melee, 7, defensive skills, dodge, 4, weapon skills, sling, 14, blunt, 7, occupational skills, not to be confused with combat professions, occupational skills allow people to earn a wage, run a business, build garrisons, or create weapons, armor, and potions to supplement adventuring. Carpentry, 3. Forestry, 17. Skinning, 22. Cooking, 15. Fishing, 3. Affinities, light magic, 80%. Languages, Goblin, common, disposition, friendly. Charney has 45 available attribute points. You may spend 45 attribute points for Charney. With the disposition of friendly, you may spend 3 attribute points per level gained by this companion. To spend more, increase disposition. Unspent attribute points will be banked and can be spent by other trainers. Right, good luck with that. I noted how Honora was updating her system messages to clarify their meanings, and wondered if the data she'd collected from my thoughts after I met Roshan and Priya played some part in it. Welcome to the team. Now if you'll excuse us, we have a cave to clear. You got it, boss man, Charney replied. Come on, sis. Lucius pressed her hand to the dip between my chest and abs for the third time and smiled again. Her voice adopted a sultry tone that took me by surprise. I won't forget what you've done for us. With the expression of a sigh, I forged a smile of my own and nodded. Glad to have you. I hugged her with one arm, released my grasp quickly, then turned. You ladies ready to break stuff? Priya raised her hand claws and they popped with crooked lines of electricity. How do you do that when I see nothing on your casting bar? I asked. She shrugged. No idea. I just do. Man, you've got something otherworldly going on inside you. She smiled, a hormone-eliciting smile that made me want to make more babies. What am I thinking? I glanced in a circle around my feet. Where's Click? I thrust out a hand. The azure glow cast a circle on the ground and my pet materialized. She was hunched low and creeping like she'd been in the forest hunting prey. I wish you'd stop running off like that, I chastised. Clicks fired from between her silvery teeth. You ready for some business? She raised onto her hind legs, popped out her claws, and grinned. 9. The transition was instantaneous and reminded me of when we'd passed into the dungeon in the Plague Barrens. I was still used to short-loading screens with VMMORPGs. 
I wondered if the introduction of millions of players to the world would necessitate wait times. Then I eyed the details of the rocky walls around me, down to the dimples, and knew it wouldn't. Tiny divots of light spaced sporadically in the black rocks cast narrow beams that lit the space ahead. I disabled my inner illumination spell to rid my eyes of a strange feedback the lights presented. Roar! The scream of anger echoed down the tunnel toward us. Shadows bounced off the jagged walls. I pivoted and found that Dasini had still not come through the entrance. Tank first, Nimrod. Priya passed through behind me, then Dasini. Rashan brought up the rear. At least we did that right. In the narrow space, elbows and shoulders brushed each other. Something's already on us, I called out. Form a line, Dasini in front. Then Michonne shoved me to one side with her shoulder as she pushed past. Priya squeezed in next to me as Rashan sidled up to our backs and peered toward the bend in the tunnel where the long shadow contrasted the motes of light. Dasini's tall, proud form almost filled the passageway as she raised her shield and swirled her mace in one hand to loosen up her wrist. Come forth, spawn of darkness, and let us decide who will burn in the stenches of Hokram's belly this day. Hell yeah, I said. We're at it again. Woo! Dasini charged around the bend and vanished. I hustled ahead, and Priya fell only a step behind. As we rounded the corner, the shadow of a hairy form clawed lines into the black rocks as it struggled to its feet. The Cine's charge skill had dropped it like a sack of turds. Wide yellow eyeballs surrounded black irises and glowed at the center of its otherwise inky form. Werewolf, cursed by the dark energy of Hokram to transform into foul beasts who must dwell in dark environments, werewolves feature razor claws known to rip through metal. Level 20 Shapeshifter Strength 32 Dexterity 14 Intelligence 4 Wisdom 3 Constitution 17 Charisma 1 I eyed the silvery scratches in the black stones where the creature gained purchase to rise. Dasini, watch those claws. I can read, master. Oops. Sorry. Sometimes I didn't give my people's interfaces enough credit. My pet clicked impatiently at my feet, and although I'd had the sense to summon her away from where she'd been roaming in the lower valley, I'd almost forgotten I'd done so. Hold, super pet. Let her get some hate first. Click, click, click. Come, foulness of Hokram's dark loins. Your final rest is at hand. Zinni swung her mace in a cross arc. Its spikes punctured the werewolf's shoulder. The beast howled, faltered back a step, then raised its long claws. It swept a furry hand from high to low and growled, Death to creatures of light! The claws scratched across to Sinny's shield as she thrust it forward to match the force of the incoming attack. Werewolf uses lycanthropic scratch to sinning blocks. Damage mitigated. I cringed at the sound and scanned the shield fashioned from the beetle carapace. Shield of the Lava Beetle, level 18. Fashioned from the shell of a lava beetle, this shield is known for its high fire resistance. Type, shield. Quality, rare. Can be crafted. Durability, 99 of 100. Armor class, 10. Plus 80% fire resistance. Crafted by Giles Renard. Invented by Gemini Fowler. I could live with a single point of durability loss, but we wouldn't want to push our luck since I wasn't sure what materials could repair it. I sent a thought to my interface notepad to ask Pulo about it. When she swung the shield to clear a path for her mace, I slid to the open side and readied an arrow. Click! Engage! The porcupunk waddled around Dasini's feet and slipped silently into the shadows behind the werewolf. Charging my arrow full of mana so it glowed from head to fletchings, I unleashed an exploding shot. The missile flung through the air, past Dasini's shield, then slammed into the werewolf's unwounded shoulder. Exploding shot hits werewolf. Werewolf, minus 57 HP. 27 fire. Minus 4 HP, burn. Health remaining, 72%. Caught Cole's singed the beast's hair. 
and a circle of tiny embers spread outward from the impact area, revealing stretched, dry skin beneath. We'd injured both shoulders, so I hoped its damage-inflicting ability would be mitigated. Click sank her claws into the werewolf's thick legs and scaled to its back in my pet's preferred mode of attack. Her lips peeled back into a hungry grin, and silvery teeth bore into the cord of hard muscle between the beast's shoulder and neck. Blood erupted as she ripped a chunk of sinew away. Click attacks werewolf. Werewolf. Minus 34 HP. Minus 4 HP. Bleed. Left arm attack down. Health remaining 61%. Good girl, I whooped. The werewolf raised its claws high and swiped toward the shield, but when Desini moved to block, it halted the attack, came around with the other hand balled in a bony fist, then caught her in the jaw with a haymaker. My tank's knees buckled, her legs knocked together, and her shoulder thudded into the rocky wall. Werewolf uses faint. Desini is staggered. Werewolf uses roundhouse. Critical hit. Desini, minus 127 HP, 78% health remaining. Desini slid down the wall and onto her backside. The werewolf lunged forward and grasped the edges of her shield with both hands. It yanked hard, tugging the shield upward. Desini's butt left the ground, then dropped again. The werewolf tried again, but my tank wouldn't relinquish her wall of protection. Its thick leather strap, twisted and tied around her forearm, Held. A white glow engulfed the tank as Rashan did her thing. Rashan casts Flash Heal on Desini. Desini, plus 67 HP. 86% health remaining. The beast roared in frustration as another explosion slammed into its face and sent it reeling backward. Priya casts Flash Fire. Critical hit. Werewolf, minus 132 damage. Fire. 49% health remaining. Gods, her damage dwarfs us all. The lycanthrope released its grip on the shield, then slammed embers away from its face. The orange sparks of hot light dispersed in the air around its massive head, then floated toward the tunnel's jagged ceiling. Gods, woman, you hit like a truck. When it lowered its arms, the glow-in-the-dark yellow eyes settled on someone over my shoulder. Considering the power of the explosion, the target wasn't a mystery to me. Desini shoved her back into the wall as she fought to get to her feet, but the werewolf burst past her before she could act. I dropped the fresh arrow I'd pulled from the quiver tied to my hip and threw my hand out. Yellow light pulsed in my fingertips, then thick green vines burst up from the earth to encircle the werewolf's thick legs like boa constrictors. You cast entangling vines. Werewolf is bound. The cursed beast's thick quads flexed as it struggled against the grasp of the vines. Its glowing eyes settled on me, and a low grumble emitted from its flaring nostrils. Grrrr. Its long hand reached back where it snagged click by the scruff of her neck. A moment later, she careened through the air, then slammed into the wall. The werewolf's gaze returned to Priya as Desini set her stance ten feet away. Her nose wrinkled into a sneer as she hunched her shoulders and lowered herself to charge, but then the vines retreated into the hard earthen floor and the beast leapt forward. I threw out a leg in an effort to trip the towering half-man creature, but the sheer force of its weight as it passed spun me full circle. I dropped onto my ass. Priya screamed as the werewolf swiped its claws across her face. Werewolf uses lycanthropic scratch. Priya. Minus 220 HP. Priya is affected by lycanthropy. Minus 2 HP lycanthropy. Minus 3 HP lycanthropy. Health remaining 42%. A white glow surrounded Priya as Rashan covered her with a minor heal to counteract low damage over time. Rashan uses minor heal. Priya plus 27 HP. Priya is affected by lycanthropy. Minus two HP lycanthropy. Minus three HP lycanthropy. Health remaining 51%. As I waited for the healing over time, or hot, effect to kick in on Priya, I grasped the arrow I'd dropped. Desini sped past me in a blur and slammed into the werewolf's back. The werewolf careened into Priya, who slammed into the wall, then tumbled sideways into Rashan. 
The light priestess clutched her with both hands and grimaced. Somehow she managed to keep Priya and herself upright. Before our enemy could recover, the Sinni straddled the werewolf's back and gripped the shield with both hands. The modified beetle shell rose high behind my tank's head as she brought it over, then down on the werewolf's back. She raised it for another strike. Then the unmistakable cracking of cartilage came to me in the dimness. Dasini is enraged. Attack up. Dasini attacks werewolf. Werewolf, minus 39 HP, plus 9 damage, rage. Dasini attacks werewolf. Werewolf, minus 41 HP, plus 11 damage, rage. Dasini attacks werewolf. Critical hit, mortal wound. Werewolf, minus 57 HP, plus 21 damage, rage. Health remaining, 7%. Die! The Sinny howled with each swing. Die, die, die! Yeah, kill it! I yelled. With no line of sight to my target, I dropped the arrow a second time and ripped a dagger from my belt. I duck walked closer, gripped my weapons, then stabbed the werewolf's calves over and over. Click sped over and scurried around us, seeking a spot to attack. She stopped next to me, stood on her hind legs, and then squealed. Hold, I muttered as I rose. You have vanquished a level 20 werewolf, plus 3,768 XP. Golden lights surrounded Rashan and funneled through the rocky ceiling as music filled the air. Rashan has reached level 17. Rashan has gained five attribute points. Rashan has learned a new spell, Light Shockwave. A burst of light energy erupts from the caster, instantly healing party and raid members within a 40-yard perimeter for 50 HP plus 5 HP per intellect rank. Rashan didn't clap her hands or show any indication she'd noticed. Instead, they glowed white as she cast another heal upon Priya. She readied another on the tail of the last spell as her casting bar filled on my party interface. I delayed the assignment of her new attribute point so as not to distract her. Priya glowed again. Rashan casts Flash Heal. Priya is at full health. Plus zero HP. Priya is affected by lycanthropy. Tissini pulled the half-elf to her feet, embraced her, then held her at arm's length. Are you well? Tissini asked. My head's throbbing. Little white circles dance in the air like fireflies. Her eyes had gone dull gray. My interface showed no timer on the negative status effect. You sure you can go on? You look pale. She nodded. I can fight. She balled up her fists, but her words came out in a monotone lacking conviction. I long to burn things. I focused on her face. Priya is affected by lycanthropy. She wasn't losing any health, but something about the dullness in her eyes and how she'd complained of what sounded like migraine symptoms loomed over my mood. When they released each other, I punched a Sinny's shoulder lightly. Remind me never to piss you off. I was quite angry, Master. I'm certain Solara is displeased. She turned her gaze toward her boots. No, you held on to that shield like a level 100 while a much stronger beast made a concerted effort to jerk it from you. If that's failure, we'll never succeed. Sometimes things get out of control. It comes with adventuring. But your rage regained us control. Thank you, Master. You are always so kind to me. Her gaze flicked downward for a moment. Even when I don't deserve it. She turned up the tunnel and paced away. I sighed. But Dasini's dejection was as much a sign of her dedication to perfection as anything. Who could fault that? Priya's clammy hand added to my worry when I grasped it and pulled her forward. We followed Dasini up the tunnel in search of our next challenge. 10. Priya's form was cast in a white glow and green numbers rose from the crown of her head. Plus zero HP. Plus zero HP. Plus zero HP. Priya is affected by lycanthropy. Save your mana. It's not doing anything. Rashan nodded. This message worries me. I know nothing of this lycanthropy. Do you, Gemini? Although I shook my head, I wasn't sure it amounted to a lie. 
After all, Enora had striped boa constrictors with fangs like cobras, so who knew how lycanthropy worked? If her database of earth and lore followed common tropes, well, I just hoped to high heaven I was wrong. I raised Priya's hand in my grasp to kiss the back of it, but stopped short. When I pushed up the kimono sleeve on her robe, dark hairs covered her usually smooth arms. Uh-oh. I glanced up at her face and couldn't suppress the jerk of my head in time to prevent alarming her. What is it? Her voice came out a few pitches too low for my comfort. Now that I focused, the gray of her eyes had transitioned, replaced by the dull yellow I'd seen in our enemy moments earlier. This is really, really bad. Bria jerked her hand away, then clutched her temples and screamed. Boot thumps grew louder behind us, then Desini reappeared. Rashan stepped forward, but I yanked her back by a bicep when the half-elf dropped to her knees. Desini stopped when I threw my other arm out. The next echoing scream prompted each of us to take a couple steps backward as my heart thumped hard in my throat. What's happening? Desini squealed in a foreign pitch I hadn't heard from her before. What is happening to her? Stand back. I shoved my arm against Desini's chest to keep her at bay. She resisted, but when I held firm, she acquiesced. Grrrr! Priya shrilled. I cringed and twisted the tip of one finger in my ear while hunching the shoulder on that side. Priya's golden blonde hair draped over her downturned face. Black washed through the strands from where it parted on top to the ends. Then it slithered and became wiry. Her chin raised high and she screamed that ear-piercing sound again. The skin between Priya's nose and mouth split and blood poured as her maxilla protruded forward between her lips with a harsh creak of bones. Her chin jutted outward and her nose stretched into a long, wide snout. Their facial skin grayed as black, fibrous hair spat from its pores like I'd taken acid and watched the wrong horror movie. Oh, Jesus! I clenched my hands into white-knuckled fists. Priya's head swept forward and down as she lowered her chest toward the ground. The backs of her clutched fists sprouted more black hair, and waves sprouted up her arms. She unfolded them, and they grew longer. Then obsidian claws sprouted with the bloody explosions of her fingertips. Threads popped in an eruptive tearing of her robe when her spine bent and ripped through her skin. Crimson bursts splattered at the appearance of each vertebra in conjunction with sickening pops. Oh God, she's going to die right here and respawn. Dark gray flesh knitted itself over the wounds as she expanded. Her moaning ceased as the torn robe slipped away and flopped to the ground. Her shoulders and massive back rose and fell in long, even breaths as she lay doubled over. Each exhale rumbled like an idling, muffled motorcycle. What had been a beautiful half-elf raised her head, slapped her elongated hands on the rocky, earthen surface, then rose slowly to full height. Her yellow eyes glowed as she peered down at me. Her attention flicked to Desini, then back. Grok! Grok! Gemini! I focused on her and immediately noticed her stats had been flipped. Priya Sky, level 16 werewolf. Strength, 24. Dexterity, 14. Intelligence, 1. Wisdom, 1. Constitution, 19. Charisma, 1. Priya, I muttered. I'd been on the cusp of pulling a full statistical set to see how she'd otherwise been affected when a scratching sound emitted from the moat-lit walls surrounding us. What now? I growled. I pivoted to find rocks the size of soccer balls popping out of the walls on either side and thumping to the ground. Short, clawed hands with knotted knuckles slid from the holes, followed by sinewy black forearms. The head topped with short, curved horns and sharp, pointed ears popped out. Four long fangs erupted from its lipless mouth. Little gray warts blotted its closed eyelids. More stout creatures contorted their bodies as they squeezed out of the walls. They rolled onto clawed feet, then bounced low on their haunches. Draconi, level 19 demon spawn. Stealthy creatures with venomous long fangs and sharp claws. The Draconi's short stature lends its strong evasive characteristics. Strength. 
12. Dexterity, 34. Intelligence, 3. Wisdom, 1. Constitution, 20. Charisma, 1. One stood upright, and its eyelids fluttered open, revealing smooth, colorless eyes. It raised its recessed nose and sniffed the air, tilting its head so one ear faced us. I smacked a finger to my lips and shot my team warning glances. My heart thumped so hard when my focus landed on Priya's gigantic form. I feared it was me who would break the silence with a whimper. Party chat. Gemini. They're blind. Don't move. Don't make a sound. The Sinian Rashan nodded. But Priya sniffed with her long snout and tilted her head to one side. A low rumble emitted from a thick chest that seemed to have stretched into a muscular wall from what had been her breasts. Uh-oh. My werewolf companion launched past us and threw her arms out in wide arcs. Long claws scratched both sides of the rocky tunnel. The Jaconi howled in a warbling shriek that pierced my ears and echoed in my bones. My eyes bulged like they'd popped from my skull. My head spun. My knees wobbled. Dasini dropped to one knee beside me. Rashan crawled between us. Click faced us from the front and tilted her head in confusion. My voice croaked as I commanded the porcupunk. Help, Priya. Her nose twitched the way it often did when she clicked, but I couldn't make out the sound over the cacophony echoing down the narrow tunnel. My eyes blinked rapid fire. Click shot off toward the battle. Our werewolf companion snatched one of the draconi. It dangled from her long fingers as she roared into its face, then slammed it into the wall. She reached for another with her free hand, yanking it so hard off its feet that its head banged into a jutting rock above and split open. Green blood splattered all over Priya's werewolf mane as she swung her arms wide, an enemy clutched in each hand. Then she slammed them together in a brutal display of awesome power. A gore fest ensued. A draconi charged and Priya, I couldn't believe that monster was Priya, shoved out a massive foot and raked her claws right through it, ripping a gaping hole in its belly. Intestines spilled onto the floor. Green demon spawn, blood splashed like a glass bottle of Mountain Dew shattered. I lowered my hand, intending to equip my bow and attack from my knees if I had to, but the shrieks pierced my ears and forced me onto my back as my nerves erupted. I shivered violently next to Dasini and Roshan, who writhed and rocked on their sides. Priya slammed more demon spawns into each other and raked others with her clawed feet and hands. With each felled monster, the decibels of intolerable racket decreased. I propped myself against the stony wall, then forced myself up with wobbling knees. The three of us leaned on each other. Weapons. I straightened my spine. We raised them, but our shoulders dropped in unison when we focused up the tunnel. Priya huffed and puffed as her wide shoulders rose and fell. A stream of blood poured down her back from an unseen wound concealed by her wiry black hair. The last living enemy writhed in the grasp of one werewolf claw like a gruesome doll. She shook it so its head lolled forward and back. Rashan raised her hand and it began to glow with a healing cast. But then our werewolf's jaws imparted impossibly wide, shoved the creature's midsection between her long teeth, and growled. The sound echoing through the tunnel reminded me of slurping juice from an orange. Priya feeds. Plus twenty HP. Plus twenty HP. Plus twenty-one HP. Priya's health is full. When the suckling stopped, she eyed the emaciated skins and bones of the creature, turned it over in her claws, then tossed it over one hulking shoulder. It thumped off the wall before splattering at my feet. A golden flash surrounded her and timpani erupted. A vision of Priya's smaller form flashed inside the beast like an X-ray when the light flashed and funneled into the cave ceiling. Rashan frowned. What? You don't like when your party members level anymore? Advancing is wonderful. Advancing as Priya sucks the blood from a demonic minion it seems contradictory to celebrate. Your companion Priya has reached level 18. Priya has four attribute points to spend. Priya's clawed feet smacked bloody earth as she turned to face us and pumped her fists in victory. Ding! Her deep voice warbled like Satan himself had uttered the word. I paced over to her, 
ringing a finger inside my ear again. I have no idea how to spend your attribute points now. They've been flipped. She tilted her head and stared at me with curiosity. Strength, she grunted. I laughed and tears filled my eyes. You got it, babe. The Cine stared at Priya from behind while the half-elf leered up the dark tunnel. I set a hand on the Cine's back and rubbed in tight circles. There was no mistaking the distress in her features. What's now? she asked. Priya turned so her long snout faced one wall, but she didn't look back. She grunted. Finish. Are you sure? the Cine asked. Priya nodded. Hungry. So gross. Okay, I clapped my hands together before Dasini's emotions could flood her. If that's what she wants, that's what we'll do. The sooner we're finished, the sooner she'll return to normal. I hope. Let's get humping. No, um, that sounded wrong. Rashan clacked the side of my head with one palm. Idiot. Within minutes, the tunnel spread into a cavern many times the size of our great room back in the home instance. Stone stalactites hung from a jagged ceiling high above. I scanned the place with the aid of inner illumination, but found no other tunnels or exits. The floor was constructed of uneven platforms of smooth granite. A water channel ran beneath two footbridges spaced about twenty feet apart in the center of the cavern. I eased a toe onto a footbridge to test its stability. It didn't creak, so I stepped out and walked halfway across. The water flowed from left to right. Shining stones lined the stream's bed, but I saw no signs of life. I'm going to check this out, Dasini. Keep your eyes peeled. I jumped in. The water rose to my hips. After wading along, I stopped where the river disappeared into the cave wall on one side. The slit through which it exited would be too narrow for us to swim under. The Dasini's tail wagged above the water as she confirmed the other side was the same. A cat in water? Who knew? I snickered. After I climbed back up, we all met in the center, except for Priya, who stood on the other footbridge and sniffed the air. What do you think? I asked. I don't know, Gemini, Rashan said. The only exit is the tunnel from which we came. Do you think we might have missed a side tunnel or something? She shook her head. As a gemologist and miner who spent many of her formative years inside dank places such as this, I would not have missed one. The Cine? I don't know, Master, but I want to get Priya out of this place and speak to Giles about this... issue. Her gaze trailed to the werewolf on the footbridge, then fell away. I grasped the little jut of her chin with my thumb and forefinger and turned it. We'll help her. I promise you that. A tear welled in one of Dasini's eyes, but she swiped it away before it could fully form and spill over. I know, master. I paced around the cavern and peeked around the footbridges, but found nothing unusual. Click skittered around with her nose pressed to the floor. Rashan moved in the other direction while Dasini traced the lines of the rock slabs that made up the floors. The footbridge creaked as Priya stepped off. Then she lumbered toward Dasini. The Michonne moved to meet her halfway. Priya set her foot down on a smaller slab between them when they came together, and it grumbled beneath her weight. The platform receded. A loud metallic thunk resounded behind the walls of the cave. The cavern began to tremble, and jostling sounds flooded down to us from above. Why do I feel like a giant boulder is about to come through a trapdoor and chase us back down the tunnel? I eyed the sheet of rock she stood on in the center of the cavern, I'd stepped there at least twice and hadn't triggered anything. But our new werewolf stood seven feet tall, and her thick muscles left her a lot heavier. The cavern floor quaked harder, and my attention diverted to keeping my balance. We all glanced up. A stalactite trembled as it loosed itself from the high ceiling. Uh-oh. Priya, move! I focused on the floor beneath them and noticed a faint outline of a green light around the cracks of the stone upon which Priya stood grew. Your locate trap skill has increased to five. Talk about too little too late. Priya shoved Dasini hard in her chest plate, then the Michonne flew backward. As our werewolf raised her foot to leap off the pedestal, 
The stalactite slammed down, driving like a spike between her head and the top of her spine. She folded it in half as it drove her hard into the floor and severed her head. No! I yelled. Priya! The Cine screamed, her armor rattling as she clambered toward the werewolf corpse. Roshan sprinted to the center of the room, then grabbed a Cine's shoulders. We must find cover. No! Priya! The Cine! Roshan commanded as she grabbed the curve of her plate armor at the back of her neck and shook it. Move! A smaller stalactite missed them by a foot as Roshan finally pried our tank away. I made a mental note to remind Dasini death wasn't permanent and suggest we had to keep our wits about us when a companion fell. If she was going to flake every time someone bit it in an instance, we were going to fail. Click darted around, stopping after every few seconds, scampering to glare up at the stalactites. Rashan and Dasini sprinted toward the far wall, but I saw no place there for them to find shelter. Two stalactites quivered above as if an unseen force monitored their movements and loosened just the right missiles. I scanned the cavern for somewhere to hide, but the walls were mostly flush with the floor, providing no recesses. The two stalactites slammed into the floor, shattering into projectiles that shot across the room in all directions. One of the shards lodged into the rail of one of the bridges. Rashan, hide under the footbridges! I dropped into the frigid water for the second time, then slid under a bridge as three more slivers of stone creaked and dislodged from the roof above. Click plopped in, then paddled furiously with her little black head and neck cutting ripples in the water. Despite the tension, she was adorable. My tank and healer splashed into the water like cannonballs to take shelter under the other bridge. I slid my hands under Click's armpits, then pulled her up into a cradle. Her hind feet scurried as if to climb the air until she was snug to my chest. Only then did she finally relax. Her cold nose twitched and tapped my cheek as she sniffed me up close. We humanoids peered at each other as the sounds of rocky bombs going off echoed throughout the chamber. We cringed with each new explosion and eyed the droplets of stone tagging the water. The attack went on for over five minutes and with each new sound I was sure stalactites would slam into one of the bridges and bring them down on us. But they didn't. After a long hiatus from the ruckus, I counted off sixty seconds in my HUD. Then we climbed back to the stone floor, Dasini and I first. We looked around, then each offered a hand to Rashant to pull her up. Dasini peered over my shoulder, and her head slowly lulled to one side. Deep creases formed waves on her forehead. Gemini? When I turned to follow her gaze, there was no werewolf course. Instead, a wide crevasse gaped where stalactites had punctured the floor. There's no sign of Priya's mangled werewolf body amongst the stone debris below. Click, nose down, scurried across the uneven plates forming the giant floor. She uttered a strange barking sound from deep in her throat. That's new. A red glow emitted from a corner underneath a section of jutting floor, but its source lingered out of sight. I crept around the perimeter of the recess, fearful the edges might cave in. The light shone through a runic symbol atop a familiar pedestal down there. Who wants to drop down? I am the lightest. The two of you will lower me. I squinted at Rashan. Yes, your highness. She returned the squint. You take exception to how I speak? One side of my nose twitched. Rashan clapped her hands in front of her chest and bent sideways at the hips while tilting her head to one side. A wide smile crossed her lips, and her teeth shone beneath. I realized she was mimicking Priya before she spoke a word. If the two of you would be so unbelievably kind as to lower me to the floor below, I would endeavor to set my hand upon the pedestal and— She lowered her tone and growled. Gets us the hell out of this demon-ridden cave of Hokram. Much better, I said. Infuriating pig, Rashan grumbled. The Cine and I lowered her over the section of subfloor with the least amount of debris. She landed nimbly enough, then threw me a final glare. Her facial muscles so tight, I couldn't see her eyes. When she set a hand on the pedestal, a system message popped up. Foundation challenge. Mining. Objective, 
complete. Clear this tunnel to unlock a mine rife with copper, tin, and randomly spawned nodes of varying composition. Random gem nodes will also spawn here. Rewards, 11,000 XP. Timed resource spawning. Place your hand on the pedestal and choose Exit Challenge to collect your rewards. Well, I said, that was easy. Dasini shoved me.